Hello, in this video we're going to look at some of the communication models that uh, various theorists have tried to explain the relationship between audience and the media. Now, since the beginnings or the inception of the mass media, um, different theorists have tried to design models um, in order to demonstrate that relationship between media and audiences. These models try to replicate or um, visualize the flow of information uh, as well as the process of making meaning through the media. Importantly, later on during this unit, we will be discussing some theories about media influence and who actually has power or control. This is not that. These models are simply mapping out um, the flow of communication and we want to look at how these models have changed over time. So it's really important that we understand that there are many different theories and models attempting to explain the nature of the relationship between media and audiences. What we're going to look at today is only a few in this video, um, but it's really, really important to understand that no model is 100% accurate in all scenarios because the relationship between the media and audiences is dynamic and constantly changing. So one of the first and most basic models of media communication is what we call a linear model. Linear just means um, flows in one direct line. So in its basic form, we have the sender of any communication. Um, in this case, it's the media we have the message that they are passing on and we have the receiver which in a media context is the audience now this communication model applies outside of the media um, the sender message and receiver could be something as simple as a letter um, or a uh, text message um, but for the media you know the the sender might be a newspaper the message might be the article that they write and the receiver would be the person who reads that newspaper article. Now this was a really popular model in the 1930s when um, media theories really began to ramp up um, as the rise of radio and cinema began to permeate throughout all of society. Um, this is a model that we can associate with a popular theory of media influence called the hypodermic needle theory or the bullet theory um, that suggested that uh, the receiver or the audience um, would absolutely accept all messages that are um, poured into them, that they were uh, essentially an empty vessel um, that wouldn't find any uh, critique or couldn't critically think of the message and we just accept what the media is presenting them. That theory of influence has since been heavily criticised and other theories have come to light. But it's important to note that um, this linear model of communication actually found a resurgence in the 1980s when the theorist Stuart Hall um, added the processes of encoding and decoding not to explain the influence of the media but just to understand how um, media messages and media communication occurs. So Hall suggested that the sender would encode a message um, so by applying the, the uh, codes and conventions that we've discussed in narrative and ideology, um, the media maker or the media producer would actually encode a media text with a message and then it was up to the audience to then decode that message to understand the meaning behind it. So while this is a very old theory, um, it does find resurgence and people referring back to it um, as recently as the 1980s and even still today. Although because the linear model um, obviously has some flaws in terms of presenting the audience as um, just a consumer, in the broadcast era, another model um, became more popular and this is known as the feedback loop. 
um, this accounts for greater audience agency in the relationship um, as they're no longer presented as passive sponges just absorbing information but rather recognize that an audience's reaction to a media message then has an effect on the media itself. So the feedback loop essentially presents itself as the media is presenting a message which affects the audience who then presents back a reaction and then that affects the media. In more recent times in a post broadcast era, we can understand that this feedback loop has gotten much faster with online audience reactions being immediate. If we think during the broadcast era, um, the media, let's say a newspaper would um, create a message. So they publish an article and the audience would read that and it would affect them in a certain way. And then perhaps that audience would um, present back a reaction in terms of letters to the newspaper editor. Now, of course, those letters would arrive two or three days later, and then that would have the impact and give that feedback to the media to suggest that either their audience was rejecting that original message or supporting it. So that's a few days. That, that's, that's quite a long um, feedback loop. Cinemas, even today, still operate off box office results which are released weekly. Take this even further, um, radio, even still to this day in Australia, radio ratings are measured by a survey diary in which uh, for six times throughout the year, um, audience members would be given a physical diary where they would actually note what radio stations they're listening to. And it's a process that takes a couple of months. And after those couple of months, does the audience actually send back their diaries and the media would work out whether their breakfast show, for example, was quite popular or were people rejecting the new presenters. So for um, traditional media in the broadcast era, this feedback loop was quite slow. But today we can measure something like a hashtags trending or the likes and comments on any given social media post in real time. Another change that has occurred is that this feedback loop has closed in on itself as individual audience members themselves might be communicating with other individuals and leaving the mass media out of the picture altogether. For those of us that have private accounts on Instagram where we are only posting to friends or perhaps we're in groups on Facebook, that is something that is cutting out the mass media altogether. And so as audience members, we are creating messages and then presenting them to other individual audience members who would react to that message and so on and so forth. And finally, the other change is that this loop starts to work in reverse where we have those individuals who are posting things to social media and then the mass media might pick them up. If we think recently to the Black Lives Matter hashtags, news media would actually be using some of the footage that individual audience members were capturing and uploading to social media. An example of the evolution of the feedback loop's speed. Um, as I said in the past for newspapers, it would take a few days for the newspaper to actually get feedback from their audience in terms of letters. Whereas today, somebody might post something on social media, in this case, um, a photo from a photographer on Instagram. And this was a screen grab I took five minutes after it was originally posted. And we can see here that it had already received 201 likes. So obviously the individual user here, in this case, Rex Shooter, um, was getting some favorable feedback until one audience member who perhaps was being a little bit of a smart aleck made this comment. And of course, when we look at that photo, we can see perhaps why. Now, obviously this is just the belt dangling down in the background, but of course this audience member by making this comment has changed perhaps the meaning that we read as other audience members looking at this photo. And so this feedback loop forced the original creator to actually take down the photo. 
and this happened only two minutes after that comment. So the comment appeared six minutes after the original post and that post was removed two minutes later. We can see the speed of that feedback loop occurring in a contemporary media, a social media landscape. Another example of how the feedback loop reverses can be seen in 2018 where an individual posted this cute photo of a raccoon that was steadily climbing up a building in Minnesota, USA. And these posts were uploaded frequently and the hashtag MPR raccoon was the top trending hashtag on Twitter after only a couple of hours. On the other side of the world, an Australian television news network picked up this story and used that Twitter footage to present their own mass media news story for an audience that is completely removed. This occurred less than 24 hours after that original post. And then later on, um, the ninth most followed Instagram account at the time, that of The Rock, um, incorporated this idea, built upon this idea of the NPR raccoon and built it into promotion for his upcoming film at the time, Skyscraper. The idea of the raccoon climbing up this building was similar to The Rock himself climbing up um, the skyscraper in the film. And so we can see how just one individual audience member might post something to social media and it can be picked up and taken off by the mass media, that feedback loop working in reverse. And as we've discussed these examples of the feedback loop operating in a contemporary media environment, we can understand that perhaps it is no longer a loop at all, um, where the relationship is no longer between audiences and the media one-on-one. -on -one. As audiences form their own media-based social networks, their messages and reactions are passed on to other individuals who then feed their reactions to those messages back to the original poster as well as yet further audiences. And this has led to what is termed a viral or a spreadable model of communication. Now, we are very familiar with the idea of somebody on social media going viral as having their post passed on to others and others and others at an exponential rate. But this is something that um, we will visit later on in this unit because this idea of the virus or the viral mode of communication has been built into a more substantial theory called spreadable media theory. And so hopefully we can see here um, with these three simple examples, the evolution in terms of how theorists have believed that media communication has occurred where originally it was a single direct linear message to a loop to now a very complex chain of communication between various parties.